So we can further divide uh, variables into four different levels. Right? The lowest level, the level that every variable fits into, uh, is called nominal data. Right? And these are simple labels right? that, that don't really give any information about size or quantity. So mathematically, there isn't a whole lot we can do with this kind of data. Right? But the next level up uh, is called ordinal data. This is data that can be sorted right? and where the order of the results, first versus second, second versus third, tells us something about how the two values compare to each other. So with those definitions in mind, right, let's, uh, let's take a look at these variables and see where each one lands. So true-false responses can be ordered, right? Any data can be ordered just using uh, the standard, standard dictionary ordering. However, if you respond false and I respond true, sorting your answer before mine doesn't give you any information you can use to compare them, which puts this response and this variable in the nominal category. Okay, so now if we sort the number of insects per foot, I do get some information from the result. Knowing that 100 square feet, uh, 100 per square foot, comes before or is greater than 80 per square foot, tells me that the former plot is, in a sense, more densely populated than the first one. So since the ordering of the two values tells me something about how they compare, this is an ordinal variable. Now, I also get information from sorting sales rankings, right? Knowing that employee A comes before employee B tells me that, in some sense, employee A did better than employee B did. That makes this an ordinal variable. And finally, knowing that citizen A has a higher social security number than citizen B doesn't give me any way to compare the two. And so this one is a nominal variable. So when you're trying to distinguish right between these two, the key question to ask is does sorting the values tell me how one result compares to another one? If the answer to that is yes, then you have an ordinal variable. If it's no, then you just have a nominal variable. All right, so the next highest level is called interval data. And notice that this definition starts off with the requirement that we have to be able to order the data meaningfully. Right, this is the same requirement that we already saw for ordinal data. So as we move through these definitions, you'll see that each one just builds or adds on to the one that came before it. So when you're making decisions about classifying variables, right, just keep in mind that a variable can ultimately only have one level. Your final answer will always be the highest one that a variable qualifies for. So the, the next part of our definition says that the differences between two values have to be meaningful. So since the data already has to have a meaningful order, we can already tell which value is, in a sense, higher than another. To qualify as an interval variable, we also have to be able to tell how much higher by looking at their difference. Right, so again, uh, I've got some examples here for us to look at. Um, on the last slide, we saw that social security numbers didn't meet the requirement to be an ordinal variable. Since the requirements of an ordinal variable are part of the requirements to be an interval variable, and since social security number didn't meet that hurdle, right, it can't uh, be the even higher uh, level interval type. So social security numbers are gonna kind of max out at nominal. Okay. Insect density, uh, this one is going to be an interval variable. Not only does knowing that 100 per square foot is greater than 80 per square foot, right, tell me that one is denser than the other. If I subtract the two values and get 20 per square foot, that tells me how much more it is. 
Right. So on the last slide, uh, looking at sales rankings, we, we saw that sales rankings were an ordinal variable. So we know that it's a contender to fit the interval category. However, if I take two successive rankings, for example, one and two or three and four, and subtract them, the difference is always going to be one. So while I can tell who performed better by sorting the values, the differences between two values doesn't tell me how much better one person does. This le That leaves this one back in just the ordinal category. And finally, sorting temperatures, it does tell me which object is hotter than the other, and subtracting two temperatures does tell me how much hotter. That puts patient temperatures in the interval category. All right, so ratio data, this is our last one. Ratio data is similar to interval data, but instead of looking just at the difference between two values, we're going to look at their ratios. So notice again that this definition builds on the previous ones. So to make it into consideration for this category, a variable has to have met the requirements to be both an ordinal variable and an interval variable. So again, let's look at some examples. Uh, the way I approach this question is to ask myself if one region has 100 per square foot and another has 300, is the second region three times as dense as the first? Well, in this case, yes. That is what the ratio of 300 to 100 is telling me. So this is a ratio variable. Now, again, sales rankings didn't even make it into the interval category, which means they're going to be stuck down at the ordinal level. Uh, and let's see, thinking about weight, is a 30-pound object three times as heavy as a 10-pound object? Well, that is the case. So this is a ratio variable. Now, temperature we have to think about a little. Remember that temperature is, in a sense, a measure of how hot something is. And a marble that's 30 degrees is not necessarily three times as hot as a marble that's 10 degrees. So temperature is going to stay at the interval level. Now, what we have here um, is an alternative definition of a ratio variable that, that's popular in a lot of textbooks. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like this definition. However, since it's common in statistics textbooks, I, I feel obligated to discuss it. Right? The definition starts off with the order, ordinal and interval requirements, just like before. But it ends with this idea of having a natural zero. For a variable to have a natural zero, it has to be possible for it to have none of the quantity being measured. Now, th this makes sense for some things. Heart rate, for example. If a person's heart isn't beating, then their heart rate would be zero, and that would qualify it as a ratio variable. Other things like, like weights, for example, um, aren't so clear. To justify saying that something has a weight of zero pounds, first you'd have to distinguish between weight and mass, and then you would have to think about the object possibly being in space, where there isn't any gravity and... That's just too much for me. If you have to appeal to physics and space travel to explain your answer, then your definition is probably more complicated than it needs to be. So for me, uh, the definition in terms of ratios is almost always more straightforward to apply, and it's a natural step forward from the interval definition. One talks about the difference of two values, and the next one talks about their ratio. So here again, I've got two hierarchies, uh, the, the two hierarchies we've talked about laid out visually. So you can see how our levels of measurement have uh, a kind of progression from least complex up to most. So now that we know how to categorize variables, we're going to take a step closer to the actual data collection process and think about how variables fit into the 
design of a statistical analysis program.